Hello, my name is Brandon Silva and I'm a Construction Senior Associate at Bexley Beaumont. This is the third in a series of vlogs. Now today I'm going to be talking about payment in the construction industry. Now the relevant statute when it comes to payment in the construction industry is the Housing Grants Construction and Regeneration Act. Now this act applies to all construction contracts and what it provides is that where the construction contract provides that the duration of the work is going to be more than 45 days, then that construction contract must have an adequate payment mechanism. And if the contract does not have an adequate payment mechanism, then the relevant provisions for the scheme for construction contracts apply, and the relevant provisions are imported into the contract and take effect as implied terms. So the question is, what is an adequate payment mechanism? To be an adequate payment mechanism, it needs to set out what and when payments become due and also state the final date for payment. Now, looking at a form of standard contract, the JCT, this incorporates the requirements of the Act and has an adequate payment mechanism. It provides for a due date, it provides for a final date for payment, and it also um, has provisions with respect to payment notices and also pay less notices. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. Well, under the unamended JCT, it typically provides that um, the due date is seven days after the issue of an application for payment. So that then starts off the process. We now know what the due date is. Now the final date for payment is linked to the due date and is uh, a number of days after the due date. So it could either be 14 or 28 days after the due date is the final date for payment for the relevant payment cycle. Now these two dates are important because it is by reference to those dates that there is deadlines with respect to payment and payless notices. A payment notice has to be issued by the employer to the contractor no later than five days after the due date and must set out the sum the employer considers to be due and the basis of that of the basis on which that sum is calculated. Equally, with a pay less notice, that has to be issued by an employer no later than five days before the final date for payment and again has to set out the sum due and the basis of the calculation, the basis on which that sum is calculated. Now, if an employer issues a pay valid payment notice, the amount stated in that payment notice is known as the notified sum and the employer has to pay the notified sum by the final date for the payment unless they issue a valid pay less notice within the prescribed period of time. If, however, the employer does not issue a valid payment notice, then the contractor can issue a payment notice in default. And typically, this will automatically be their application for payment. And as a result, the sum stated in that application for payment will become the notified sum. And again, that will have to be paid by the employer by the final date for payment unless a valid payless notice has been issued. Now, before I go on to what the redress is available to a contractor where an employer has failed to pay a notified sum by the final date for payment, I'm just going to talk about the requirements of an application for payment, payment and payless notice because this is very, very important. As I've already mentioned, to have a valid application for payment, payment or payless notice, they all have to do two things. They have to set out the sum due. So right at that end of the document, it needs to have in bold, underlined, this is the amount we consider to be due. And then the second thing is, you need to have a calculation as to how you've arrived at that figure. And that calculation needs to be sufficiently detailed so that the reasonable recipient upon receiving that document knows how you've ar arrived at that figure. So you need to go into sufficient breakdown as to the individual figures, which all add up to that final figure, so that the reasonable recipient can understand how you've arrived at it. If it doesn't go into that sufficient detail, nor doesn't detail the sum due at the end, then the document will not be compliant. That applies for both an application for payment, a payment and a payless notice. 
Now, I'll talk about the ramifications in a minute where you don't issue a compliant payment or payless notice. So this just reinforces how important it is to, co to comply with these requirements. The final requirement is that the relevant document has to be issued within the prescribed period of time. As I've already mentioned, there are certain deadlines with a payment and payless notice. If you issue that outside of those deadlines, you cannot rely on those, that document. And as I'll talk about now, there are ramifications as a result of that. So let's look at an example. Let's say an employer has issued a payment notice in the sum of 100,000. That will therefore be the notified sum and the amount due to the contractor unless the employer issues a payless notice. Let's further assume that the employer does issue a valid payless notice in time and says, actually, I've changed my mind. The amount actually due to you is 50,000 pounds. That is the amount that is due to the contractor by the final date for payment. Now, what happens if the employer fails to pay by the final date for payment that 50,000 pounds? Well, the contract provides certain remedies available to the contractor. The first remedy available to the contractor is that the contractor will be entitled to interest. And if the contract provides a cert for a certain interest rate, then that is the rate that will apply and it will be interest at the rate stated in the contract on the amount due. And it will be interest charged between the final date for payment and the date that payment is finally made. If the contract does not have a interest rate, then statute will apply and it will be 8% uh, above the Bank of England base rate. That's what the Late Payment Commercial Debts Act provides is the um, interest rate for late payments. So that's the first remedy available to a contractor. The second remedy available to a contractor is that they can suspend the works. However, there are certain requirements that have to be met before you can suspend the works. And this is relying on the statutory provision within the Housing Grants Construction Regeneration Act, which provides for such a right. So in order to suspend the works, first of all, the final date for payment must have elapsed and the employer has not paid the notified sum or the sum stated in the payloads notice. Secondly, you must then issue a notice, a notice of intention to suspend. And then seven days, at least seven days must have elapsed since the issue of that notice. And in that seven day period, they still haven't made payment. Then after at least seven days have elapsed, you can then suspend the works. In addition to this, as to the specific notice, the notice of intention to suspend, that notice must state the grounds upon which you consider that you intend to suspend the works, i.e. you'd state in that notice that whatever sum it may be is the notified sum, it's, you've not uh, paid it by the final date for payment, and therefore pursuant to the provisions of the contract or statute, we will be suspending the works if payment is not made within the next seven days. Finally, the service of the notice. You must comply with the notice provisions in your contract when it comes to the method of service of the notice. Typically, contracts provide uh, have a notices provision and provides that notices have to be served by an effective means and normally is has to be sent by registered sign for post. So to protect your interests, I would advise always that if you are going to issue a notice of suspension, the seven days notice, that you do it by registered sign for post and that you get a receipt so you can hold on to that for the future. So that's the second remedy available. The third remedy available is that you can commence an adjudication. You can commence an adjudication if you have a contractual right to refer a dispute to adjudication or a statutory right. The Act provides that if there is a construction contract, then you have a right to refer a dispute to adjudication. And the specific dispute that you'd be referring to adjudication is known as a smash and grab. You are not seeking a true value adjudication. You are not seeking a payment on the merits. Rather, you are simply seeking on a technicality that because no valid either payment or payless notice has been issued, that the notified sum is due and has to be paid by the final date for payment. It doesn't matter if actually you are entitled to less, a lesser amount because the true value of the works is less. It is simply the case that that is the amount stated in your application or payment or payless notice, and therefore that is the notified sum, and it has to be paid by the employer.
Now you'll only be successful in a smash and grab if your application for payment is valid. We've already talked about what the requirements are. And if on the flip side, um, you're defending this, you will only be successful in defending this if you've issued a valid payment or payless notice, and it's obviously to the sum of zero. Now, even if you are issuing a payment or payless notice to the sum of zero, you still have to set out the basis of the calculation. You can't just say we consider the amount to be due is zero. You have to show how you've arrived at that zero figure. The final redress available to um, a contractor is the termination. Now, I've talked about this one last because it is a drastic step and it very much depends on the provisions of the contract as to whether you are able to terminate a contract for non-payment. In most instances, you will not be able to terminate simply for non-payment unless the non-payment is persistent substantial and cynical and that's with reference to case law so you may or may not be able to terminate the contract but it very much depends on the provisions of the contract as to whether or not you can my advice is strongly never to terminate a contract without getting legal advice first because you could be wrongfully terminating a contract and then the other side is entitled to recover damages because that is a breach of contract. So it is only in very limited circumstances where you will be able to terminate for non-payment and it has to be very substantial, persistent and cynical. So in summary, um, I've talked about payment, I've talked about the very important requirements of a payment and payless notice and um, the requirements of such and what need to be met in order to be um, successfully rely on such document. I've also talked about the remedies available to a contractor when an employer fails to pay a notified sum, whether that being the sum in the payment notice or application for payment, if it's a payment notice in default, or alternatively the sum in the pay less notice and the remedies available. The final thing I will talk about is that I've mentioned the JCT contract. There is one difference between the JCT contract and the NEC. Let's say, for example, you've issued a payless notice and actually the payless notice states that actually there's been an overpayment and there is a sum due to the employer in the sum of £50,000. Under the JCT, the contractor does not need to issue any documents in response. Under the NEC, however, the contractor does, however, have to issue a payless notice in response to that payless notice, as otherwise the amount stated in that payless notice in fact becomes due to the employer, specifically the £50,000 overpayment. So it's very important under the NEC that if the contractor maintains that they're due monies and actually there's no been over, not been an overpayment, then they actually have to issue a payless notice in response to that payless notice. So that's the slightly different nuanced position when it comes to an NEC. I hope this has been useful and please tune in to further vlogs that we will be talking about and uploading shortly. Thank you.